Hey YouTube, it's time for another one of these weekly vlogs. I'm really tired, so sorry if I look really tired. Uh, terrible sleep last night, I've been sleeping very badly. Pretty much night on end, week on end, for quite a while now, but last night was an especially bad one. Didn't fall asleep until after 4am, and uh, just got up very recently. So the subject that I have decided for today will be self-motivation. Oh. <laughs> I'm so tired. Alright, self-motivation. I wrote down no notes for it. I'm gonna go entirely off the top of my head. Although I did look up one stat in relation to what I'll be talking about. So, self-motivation. With me, it's kind of a double-edged sword of sometimes a... Well, a double-edged sword isn't really the best way of describing it. Goes up and down in a wild spikes from day to day. And uh, the reason of, for this is... I'll, I'll give you my mindset, basically, of the highs and the lows of it, which explains it. And, of course, can't do work without motivation. So... Sometimes it's really, really high, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, you know, keep working at this thing, I'm having fun, I build up an audience, and talk to my viewers more, and, you know, make a living off this, blah, 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 I'm really good mood, and that's because I will look at things like, a, I'll put it a video, and it has overwhelmingly positive responses, of course, a uh, good one where it gets a lot of views, lots of likes, and everyone's commenting saying like, oh, this is awesome, I, I enjoyed this video. I usually get that with stuff like Screenshot Warfare, which is actually what went up today. I'm uploading this the same day I'm recording it. Um, so, I've already seen a bunch of people today comment and say, because I read all the comments again, uh, I got emailed for a bunch of comments saying that like this made their day. So that's awesome. That makes me happy. Other things that keep my motivation up like that is, you know, when I'm just suddenly really in the mood for a game, so I start, like, doing it on the stream or recording it, and I feel good about the out uh, the product that is coming out of it, or perhaps if it was on the stream, then people seem to be liking it, stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff. Oh, and another thing is, uh, simply just being on the forum often cheers me up. Because I'll go into the forum and be like, wow, like 700 people made accounts on this forum just through my show. A lot of people just showed up and posted one post where they just wanted, they just posted a story and abandoned it and then leave. A lot of people have done that, but uh, for the most part, we have a lot of people who um, actively post there like every single day, just having conversations and stuff, whether or not it's productive for the show at all. It's debatable, it depends on how much time they spend on the creepypasta section, really. But it's still fun and interesting, and people are talking to each other, and it's, you know, making it feel a little bit more like a community. So I like that a lot, I like talking with them. So the forum usually cheers me up a lot. Moderating the forum can be difficult, but for the most part, the forum is all around fun and cheers me up. And then there's the low ends of... Uh, the, the low ends of motivation. It's funny because people always get confused when I say that, like, I often feel really, really unmotivated to do work. Because they're like, like, look at your situation. You have, like, 11,000 subscribers. You've made it. I haven't made it. It's, uh, it's not that good yet. The way I try to look at it is there are, at least currently, I, I there's a big turnaround rate of, like, I get, like, over a thousand subscribers a month and then like 200 or 300 leave every month so there is like a turnaround rate there are people who leave but um for the most part the current 11,000 people who are subscribed to me at some point in time they watched one of my videos and they enjoyed enough and they smiled and they said i want to see what this guy does and they hit the subscribe button that means that there are at least 11,000 people that I likely either made their day or at least made them happy for a little while, and that's cool to me. So, I, that keeps me motivated. What doesn't keep me motivated, because there's all these cool things I mentioned, 
And these are all the cool things that the that like when I say like I'm really unmotivated, they're like, but you got like all this going for you. I see the other end of it too. The the end that no one else sees. I see the money end of it. I see the analytics end of it. My god, the analytics are depressing. I love checking the analytics, but they're so depressing. And of course, there is also the problem of when a hundred people call you a piece of shit a day for not liking their favorite story, there's a certain point when it ruins your mood. Because, I again, I read all of the comments. I still have YouTube set to email me for every comment, and I read all of them. And, uh, you get some nasty comments. Um, I got a pretty thick skin about it, but sometimes it just gets under my skin. If I'm in a bad mood. But anyway. Um. Where was I? Where was I? Right. The analytics is an especially depressing one. It sucks when, like, I, I work full time on this. This is my job. Uh, and I'm working all the time on this stuff. Very hard. And this is not entry level stuff. A lot of the stuff that I do requires actual background and editing, which I have. I use professional grade software. Ugh. Not feeling well this morning. I just wolfed down a bunch of, uh, Oatmeal and tea. And water. And I'm tired. And I just woke up. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, um... So, this is difficult work for the most part. And plus... Even I'm, if I'm recording, like... Some people just look at it and they're like, You're just playing a video game. Yeah, but I'm playing a video game on screen, so I have to be, like, on and talking and concentrating on the game while being somewhat interesting. And I need to do that for hour 2000. Like, how long have I been in front of this camera? Or metaphorically, like, how long have I been in front of this microphone playing games and talking to people? Uh, it, it's taxing. You get good at it. And some days it feels like it's second nature. It's super easy and it's super fun. Some days it feels so difficult. Just to concentrate and talk and find relevant things to talk about and interesting things to talk about. And often I fail at it. However, I do think I'm getting better with time. So sometimes it can be very, very taxing, very, very stressful, very, very difficult. On top of that, there's, of course, the editing and then there are the shows I do either than just playing video games, you know, screenshot warfare, although screenshot warfare is entirely fun. It, it's a bit time consuming, but it's fun. Um, this, the creepypasta are quite stressful to do often. Some days, I just can't read off a script. Like, I have the story there in front of me, the microphone here, and for whatever reason, I get tongue-tied every other sentence. I need to cut out all the failed takes and just, oh. Some days I'm, I do great at it, and some days I do horrible, and the editing on that is painfully slow, because, like, every few sentences, I cut take. It's not hard editing, it's just tedious editing. But I keep rambling, the, the, the analytics is one of the worst ones where, you know, for all the time I spend on, like, ostensibly, like, it's a video game show. My, my YouTube show slash Twitch show, it's a video game show. But it has this tiny little side show I do once a week where I do creepypasta, video game creepypasta, often homemade ones. For some reason, that got way bigger than the rest of my show. And the problem with this is, so many people who are finding me through these creepypasta, which are almost all of them, by the way, do not watch anything else I do. All of that hard work I put in, all of that time and effort, very few people watch it. This is the statistic I looked up. I took a look at my subscriber count. I took a look at the average amount of views I've been getting on my Let's Play videos. For the last, um, well, you can go back about six months. In the last about half a year, how many my average Let's Play video gets within the first three days of being online, which is about only 350 views. You know how much that is? That's 3% of my subscribers. Only 3% of my subscribers watch that. 97% of my subscribers don't watch almost anything I do 
but the creepypasta videos. Occasionally, they'll watch Screenshot Warfare or Flash Trash. That only bumps it up to 5%. Yeah. So 95% of my audience only, exclusively, watches the creepypasta, and even then, uh, most don't watch it on the first week. Um, in fact, I do have a lot of subscribers that just don't watch anything I do, and yet they're still, still subscribed to me. The vlogs tend to get a few more views than the Let's Play videos, I think. <laughs> Even though, very little effort has to go into these, uh, these videos. Although I try to keep it somewhat concise. Usually do a bad job at it. But yeah. So that's depressing. Another depressing thing you know from analytics is audience retention. That is, how much of the wi the, the video, how much of the video do they actually watch? Well, I can tell you that less than 10% of people who watch the Creepypasta videos watch the final thoughts. If you look at any given Creepypasta video after the analytics and stats have um, fully processed, for YouTube it usually takes a few days, after you see that it is fully processed, um, the audience retention, the audience retention, like, it'll have little drop-off at all times. Like, any YouTube video, it starts really high and slowly goes down as people would as some people leave which i think is weird because i watch the full video of almost any video i click on but whatever um it's just me i also read descriptions and the vast minority of people on youtube actually read the description which is very frustrating in fact if you look at the comments of sections of my creepypasta videos i have to say please read the description to someone in every single one uh, i have to rate that comment multiple times a week because people will be asking something that's answered in the description, it's frustrating. But anyway. Uh, the audience retention, you know, it, it drops off normally like you would see on a normal video, but as soon as it hits whatever time code in that video is where the final thoughts start, BOOM! It's just, it goes straight down. It, we, it goes down to about 10% of people. Only about 10% of people watch to the end of the video. And... That's frustrating in a few ways. Uh, one way would be that no one's watching the final thoughts, or 10% of people are watching the final thoughts, which explains a lot. They're not watching for me, they're watching for the stories. In fact, they don't even like me. If they, if they liked me and valued my opinion at all, they'd be watching those final thoughts. Which means that this person, if they don't like me, there's almost no chance they're going to watch anything else I do. They're not going to give it a chance, which explains why 97% don't give it a chance. Also, um, that means that if it's not getting to the end of the video and they're watching it in the playlist, which they sometimes do, um, likely they're not going to the next video in the playlist. Uh, they're just going to go back to the list and then find whatever random one seems interesting to them. In fact, uh, a lot of people will only watch the Pokemon ones. It's, it's an annoying thing I find on YouTube of people who love, love, love Pokemon videos only watch Pokemon videos. It's something you'll learn very early on in Let's Play, is um, don't make a Pokemon Let's Play unless you unless you grew up with it and you have a lot to say about it that you think no one else is going to say. I don't mean, like, be controversial. I mean, like, talk about your experiences with Pokemon, your history with Pokemon. Stuff that, yeah, you know, your history with Pokemon is never going to be the same as everyone else's. It's always going to be at least slightly different. Your memories of it and stuff. Talk about that during the Let's Play. It's something that they can only get from you. The game is there as a platform. You yourself need to get over, get popular, get known, show why you're worth watching. And then in turn, once you've gotten bigger and people watch it for you, you use that power you gained to then show good games that people should buy so that they can have fun playing these good games with you and it can support the, the game creators that helped pave your way. The video games are a platform, but you should always go back and help that platform, bring that platform up once you've been brought up past the level of people watching for the games and rather people watching for you. That's something important to remember on YouTube, but back to my point. Um, you do a Pokemon Let's Play, um, people aren't going to watch past the Pokemon. 
it's a really frustrating thing you'll find with YouTube and Pokemon videos. The vast majority of people who watch uh, Pokemon Let's Play videos don't watch other Let's Plays. It's really, really annoying. In fact, I got a lot of viewers when I was doing Pokemon Blue. And then they all just, I never heard from them again. Because they were just there for Pokemon. They came back again when I did Pokemon Gold, and they left again when that was over. And I don't think they ever went to Pokemon Ruby over on the walkthrough corner, because they didn't watch any of my other videos, so they didn't know that I was on the walkthrough corner doing Pokemon Ruby. So for any of you who didn't know it there, if you look at my playlist section here on YouTube, uh, I have Let's Played the first three generations of Pokemon games, all type-specific runs. So, there's that if you want to watch it. No, I'm not doing a Nuzlocke. I get suggested that all the time. I'm not doing a Nuzlocke run. I, I'm done with Pokemon Let's Play stuff. Kind of. You'll see. I have plans. But anyway, so, huge drop-off in audience retention. Only 3% of my viewers watch other things... Watch, um... Only 3% of my viewers... Watch other things I do. 5% for, uh, for some shows, it's 5%. Like, with Flash Trash, it's 5%. With Screenshot Warfare, I think it's 5%. But still, only 3% watch everything, or at least watch most things on a regular basis. Which is pretty frustrating. In fact, a lot of people on the forum only watch the Creepypasta. More people are registered to the forum then watch the average Let's Play video within the week it comes out. That's depressing. And, uh, and the last depressing thing is that, I, well, because of my contract with Fullscreen, I'm not allowed to tell you how much money I make. I can't give you a specific number, but I could give you estimates. I could give you very strong hints. I just can't tell you the numbers. Changes from month to month, of course. It depends on what advertisements are playing, how much those advertisements are worth, how many people are watching, how many people are watching who don't have ad block turned on. Good thing to keep in mind. Um, a thousand views on YouTube is worth about one to three dollars. Three is the dead maximum you'll ever see. That is like Christmas. That is only in December will you ever get three dollars. And it's not even every December. December is always the highest paying month with advertisers because... North America Christmas is a big thing. One dollar is more of the average for 1,000 views. I don't get 1,000 views on my average video. You know that. So that causes a problem. And that's 1,000 views of people who didn't click skip this ad after five seconds, and 1,000 views of people who don't have ad block turned on, because I don't get paid for either of those. I don't get paid for ad block being turned on. I don't get paid if you click skip this ad after five seconds. You have to watch at least 30 seconds for the user to get paid. So already it's going down to a low, low number of people you actually get paid for, which is crazy to me. So how much did I get paid last month? Last paycheck, how much did I get? I can't tell you the exact number, but I can tell you two things. One... It was less than $500 uh, for a whole month of work. I get one paycheck a month, whole month a week uh, of work, whole month of work, less than $500. Also, $50 mysteriously vanished from that paycheck of what I was told I was going to get and what I got. And what I was told I was going to get is also less than $500. So on top of the low, so not only is it less than $500, but it's $50 less than that despite what they told me. If you want to remind people again, don't sign with Full Screen Incorporated. I'm leaving as soon as I can. I'm waiting for my contract to expire in June, and I have another one lined up with Curse. But anyway, all that shit aside. So I make less than $500 a month, every month. I'll give you a little uh, fun fact if you don't know how people get paid here in Ontario. Minimum wage here in Ontario is $10.25 an hour. That's minimum wage. Mind you, the Canadian dollar is slightly weaker than the American dollar right now, which is weird because usually our dollar is stronger, but 
our economy has been getting pretty bad, um, and our dollar is a bit weaker right now. It's noticeably weaker. But we get paid ten twenty five an hour, uh, minimum wage. That means that for me to make as much money in a minimum wage like a Tim Hortons or uh, a McDonald's, if I were to we work for a week and a half full time, I would get the same pay as me working my current job, which is not entry level skills, more difficult than that, far more work, far harder, more stressful, more taxing. And I do that every day. No weekends. I don't take weekends off for a whole month. I don't take time off. I can't. And I get paid the equivalent of some high schooler in McDonald's working for a week and a half. A month. That's how much I get paid. And on top of that, I got my Patreon account, where people can donate money to me on a monthly recurring basis. They can change the amount they donate anytime they want. They can cancel it anytime they want if they want to stop donating money. And they get rewards in return, where you get things like you get whitelisted on the Minecraft server that I'm purchasing, although it's going to be public to everyone. However, if it ever needs to go into whitelist mode for maybe I'm doing a specific stream or something for whitelisters only, then that'll be turned on temporarily. I do want it to be open to the public for the most part. You get special things on the form, you, you get all kinds of stuff back. Um, it's, it's nothing major, but the big reason you would donate on Patreon is to help support me. So I'm making less than half the minimum wage here. And um, only three people have ever donated on Patreon. Uh, one person, who I will not name his name unless he wants me to, is donating a hundred a month. Because he's very, very nice. Another person donating five, and another person's donating one. And I very much appreciate both the five and the one. Because the way I look at it, one dollar a month being donated to me, that's a big fucking deal. Because for that person, it's like a half an hour of work a month. That's nothing to that one person is one dollar. But if everyone were to chip in one dollar, like if all of my subscribers right now were to chip in one dollar a month to me, my pay would rise 20 or 22 times? Like, that would be insane. It's impossible for that to happen, because, like, I'm not even going to break a 1,000 views on this. I'm lucky if I break 500 views on this. And then the vast majority of my viewers are quite young, and they don't have, like, a PayPal or a credit card, any kind of way to, to send the money. So it's like, obviously, that's not going to happen. Not everyone's going to want to, of course. I'm just, that's the way I look at it, and why $1 a month is a very valuable donation, and why I very much appreciate that, and that's why I give very heartfelt thanks to everyone who donates to me personally, because they deserve it. They've helped support me in a way that their views never could, because on YouTube, even if they don't skip the ads and they don't have ad block on, you would have to watch an ungodly amount of my videos to ever to ever equate to one dollar a month worth of views. I don't think it's- I'm not even sure if that's possible. So, it's appreciated. Delicious water. But anyway... Is there anything else I really had to talk about? Uh, so that's why the motivation is so goes so high and low. On top of that, troubleshooting and technical problems. You guys have known about all my internet troubles I've been having. Um, I fixed a lot of the streaming issues. I had to buy a $200 industrial router, which was a lot of my paycheck. Um, that's fixed a lot of the problems. There's, of course, the problem of just Kojiko is terrible, and the internet just goes out sometimes. And there's also the problem of um, OBS, uh, one of my two broadcasting softwares, is open broadcaster software. I also have a paid license for XSplit. XSplit is not as well optimized, it doesn't have as good of options. It's basically worse in almost every way, except OBS has a weird crashing issue with me, where certain games, and I don't know why, certain games will make OBS just stop broadcasting and try to restart itself. XSplit will do the same thing occasionally, but has a far higher threshold for it. Until OBS 
happens to fix whatever specific thing is interfering with my system, I can't reliably use OBS for most games. It's a real shame. Which sucks, because uh, XSplit is not worth money anymore. But I still have paid license. I got a huge discount because I got it back when it was in beta for a two-year license, and I renewed my two-year li two license earlier this year. I think they gave me an extra year on top of it free. I've got, like, I'm good until, like, 2013 or something. Or is it 2016 or something? Maybe 17? I forget. I'm I'm good on the XSplit li X -split license for quite a while now. But anyway, yeah, some money troubles, motivations, very up and down, works difficult. I've got a little Tigra staring at me from my right monitor when I was watching, uh, while well, I was eating some food and having some tea. I was watching uh, Video Games Awesome. See, there's another thing. Sometimes I look at my community, and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Like, I have all these people on this forum, and they're talking, and, like, this is awesome. I have, like, 20 people who show up to my stream every time. And then I'll look over at uh, VGA, Video Games Awesome, <clears throat> on Far From Subtle on YouTube, who I watch them almost every day. They're my background noise. They're what's on my second monitor when I'm doing some kind of work that doesn't require I be recording. So I'm not recording their audio or anything. That's that's what I'm watching on the side at all times is just playlists of VGA, and um, I look at their fan base like they just got back from PAX and they were like covered in a pile of gifts. People were making custom T-shirts for them. They were doing these the meetup things where you know Fraser holds up his phone, goes like, "Hey, I'm at PAX and I just met these guys," and he pulls his phone up and there are like. 50 screaming people behind him, all with their Turbo Club shirts. They all paid $50 to get in the Turbo Club just to support them. They make a living on YouTube like this. They make their own homemade costumes that kick ass for the games they're playing. They're playing Phoenix Wright right now. Fraser is dressed up like Phoenix Wright. Becky's dressed up like Maya. The whole thing's fucking awesome. I'm like, oh my god. That's awesome. Can't wait to get there one day. Look back at my channel. I've got like 500 views after two weeks on a Let's Play video. And I go to my stream. I was like, oh, this stream's going to kick ass and I'm having fun. Look over the viewer count. 20! You can't help but be a little jealous, you know? But maybe one day. Hopefully one day. Because, uh... Clearly it's working for them and not for me. But unless, miraculously, I become not disabled anymore, I'm not getting a, the, any other job anytime soon, and plus this is kind of my dream job. It's just a shame that uh, it takes a very, very long time to start up. And remember, people at home, it's, it's uh, as much up to you as it is up to me to get this thing going. If you're watching the channel and you really want to see it grow, just tell a friend. If you have a friend you think might watch this show, and might like it, then watch the show with them. Get them into it. I'd rather not be the guy who just spams my channel link everywhere. I think the best way to grow the channel is just word of mouth. Tell a friend, because what better way to make it feel like a community as a... Uh, what better way to make it feel like a community than not only can you talk with the community on the forum and everything and the Facebook, about the show and in the comments, of course, Skype, wherever the hell you want to. The Steam group, the Steam group's awesome, but um, being able to just, when you're hanging out with your friends, talk for a few minutes and say like, hey, did you watch Madurai's newest Creepypasta video? Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, and like, just make it a community thing. I think that's the best way to grow the channel. So if you want to do that, then go, go ahead and do that. If you don't want to, then go back to doing whatever you're doing. Whatever. Have a good day. Have a good day? What was that weak shit? Have a nice day.